was the wrong decision, period. Marv? Although Reggie did tell us if it happened again tonight, he'd go with the same scheme as he did Sunday night in Orlando. Rashard Lewis able to go glass. Well, uh, if you took a poll of 30 of the NBA head coaches and you tell me if they're playing the Boston Celtics and you get the ball out of Ray Allen and Paul Pierce and really Eddie House's hands and you don't care who else was going to take the game winner, you'd probably take that because Glenn Davis made a great shot and a great effort play on his part. Good hands by, by Davis to handle that good pass from Rondo but not able to hit. Reddick just one of seven the other night in in game four, but they respect his touch. Pierce comes up with a steal. Howard gets back to it. Alston to the reverse. Rebound Davis. And that's who they need to get going offensively. It's great for Austin. Dan Van Gundy says he's his guy. We're going to stay with him, but he has to make shots. And the foul is called once again. Paul Pierce attacking the basket. Foul on Howard, that's his first. And I think that's why Stan took the early timeout. You look at Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, and even Glenn Davis all attacking the basket early in this first quarter. Four of the six points for the Celtics, all points in the paint. And Paul Pierce, the man that Doc Rivers loves to have at the line, 8 of 9, game 4, 14 of 14 at the line, and in game 3 came up big. The other night, despite the fact that he was in foul trouble throughout the game. Well, what I liked is from the get-go of the start of the first quarter, he was aggressive, not settling for jump shots, taking the ball off the dribble, and attacking uh, Hedo Turkoglu. Celtics with an 8-4 lead. Reddick. First two games of the series, Reddick got off to good starts. Rondo put it behind the back. Austin went down. Rondo could not take advantage. Davis. And the long rebound handled by Reddick and rather by uh, Turkoglu and he was run into. Foul on Rondo. So the Magic get it back. This is an Orlando team that went 59-23 and 23 in the regular season. Finished third seed in the East. They won the division. Second straight year. Opening round of the playoffs. Beat the Sixers in six games after trailing in that series two games to one and the foul is away from the ball and i'm going to give uh, turkey a lot of credit in this series because he's the one that's really been getting paul pierce in early foul trouble it's his activity and right there as paul pierce picked up another foul trying to guard turkey second team foul on the celtics Shot clock to five. Turkoglu. Perkins rebound. Pierce for three. Both teams having their difficulties from three-point range the other night. In particular, the Magic. And during the course of the regular season, that has been their game. Alston passed on the long shot. Able to take to the rim. Ray for Alston with the bucket. 8-6, Boston lead. Patrick done very well in the postseason on the road. They have won three of the five road games. That is uh, last touched by the Celtics. So Orlando gets it back. And I don't know if Ray thought that Kinder Perkins was going to slide down on the pick and roll to the basket. Looked like he kind of picked and popped. Jumping out at uh, Turgalo, shoots for three. Rebounded by Rondo. Allen puts a move on Reddick. Who was the one guy standing again he was worried about in this game going off was Ray Allen. Turgalo taking to the rim. And the game is tied at eight. Stan Van Gundy saying somewhere in there there is a 35 or 40 point game in Ray Allen, although that has not been seen in this series. And this after some sensational shooting by Allen in the opening round series against the Bulls, including that 51 point outburst. Shot clock down to seven. Rondo. 
Long rebound is handled by Alston. Howard with the head fake on Davis. And that driving hook, which had been successful for Howard all season long, has been a struggle uh, in the series against Boston. Here's Pierce again to the rim. Redick able to chase it down. Oh, that's a travel. No call made. <laughs> but Dwight Howard got away with the travel Whoa. right there. The pass from J.J. Redick, which you never want to give it to the big man on the break. A 6-0 run by Orlando. That's a four or five steps. How about four and a half? <laughs> we'll meet in the middle. And a three on the 24. Allen. Kept alive by Perkins. He thought he was hit by, by Turgalo. Boston has missed its last seven shots. And uh, Doc Rivers trying to settle things down. He takes a timeout. Slap on uh, Eddie House. Uh, Rayford acquired of that three-team deal after Jameer Nelson was injured. Nice fake by uh, Pierce as Mikhail Petras, who had just come on for, you know, Turgler was called for the foul, so Pierce goes back to the line. You look at Paul Pierce, especially when he gets the ball isolated up top, either on the wing, he's going to give you that little Razzle dazzle and try to go right and pump fake. You've got to be able to stay down and contest this shot. He gets you in the air. He's usually going to get the foul. Celtics only three of 13 from the field. They have not scored in nearly four minutes. A look at the upcoming national TV schedule tomorrow right here on TNT. Dallas and Denver. Game five coverage starting nine o'clock Eastern time Thursday on ESPN game six between the Celtics and the Magic followed by game six between the Lakers and the Rockets and then Sunday on ABC it'll either be conference semifinals game seven or game one of the Western Conference Finals. A low scoring first quarter here in Boston the game is tied at 10 Lewis with a nice move Richard Lewis has given the Magic a two-point lead. And that's a tough matchup for Glenn Davis to try and guard Rashard Lewis out on the floor. Lewis, one of those players who could take the ball off the dribble. And at the other end, Lewis defending on Davis. Here is Allen for three. He has now missed his last 11 from three-point land. Lewis passed on a three, taking to the rim. And that is... A tough move going right at Kendrick Perkins. Ready to avoid the contract uh, the contact by Richard Lewis. Here's Perkins. Nice spin by Kendrick Perkins. He's had an excellent series, but to consider he's had a deal with Dwight Howard, has done a nice job. Got it at the other end. Here's Reddick for three. Rondo with the save. Celtics down by two, coming up on three minutes to go in the first. Perkins open, yes. That's the penetration and the weaving by Paul Pierce to get into the lane. Suck Dwight Howard over, wide open Perkins. Howard going at Perkins at a foul. It is called on Perkins who felt that Howard was the guy who caused the contact went right into his chest yeah, it kind of looked like Dwight Howard initiated the contract the contact looked like Perkins came right to him right here, Perkins is just waiting on him and I don't see where the contact is right there at all it's a non-shooting call Brian Scalabrini who is David Aldridge reported a couple of minutes back playing despite the flu has checked in shot clocked out of seven Howard lost it and called for the travel. Throughout the season, even during the course of the regular season, Dwight Howard has had his problems going up against Kendrick Perkins. And you wouldn't think that would be the case because Howard has the size and he has the quickness on Perkins. 
it's been the strength, the power of uh, Perkins that has affected Howard. Crowd wound up Scott Arena to shoot it. Here's Allen putting a move on Reddick and changed his mind. Saved by Rondo. Perkins rebounded by Howard. Three on one for the Magic. Nice exchange and Lewis lays it home. That's how you keep the ball off the floor, passing back and forth with your point guard, which results into an easy lay-in. Richard Lewis has hit all four of his shot attempts. Scalabrini and passed on the on the long shot. Two on the 24. Pierce fires one out, wins out, rebound. Rondo could not finish. Pierce shot from his knees <laughs> wow. as he lost his balance. Minute and a half left here in the first. Alston knocks down a three. Rafa Alston returning to the offense. Well, that's his second three in this series already. Shooting horrible from the three-point line, but found that one, that one to go. Scott Abrini is open. Already eight rebounds for Dwight Howard. Hasn't scored, but he's rebounded very well. Alston is left open for three. Good job by Howard to keep it alive. And they get the new clock. Final minute of play in the first. Alston running the clock down. Reddick for three. J.J. Reddick from downtown. Coming off the one of seven the other night. 0 for 5 from beyond that three-point line on Sunday in Orlando. A few by Rondo. 22-16 Magic. 25 seconds to play in the first quarter. There's a four-second differential. Alston dribbling his way over towards head coach Stan Van Gundy. And now the shot clock down to three. Now to one. Alston for three. Rondo racing the clock and now fires one from the backcourt. That will do it for this first quarter. Well, the Celtics just six of 22 from the field in that first quarter. The Magic hit 10 of 20. They hit two from downtown. You're looking at Tony Batie who had just checked in. Eddie House, Stefan Marbury have come on for the uh, Celtics. Courtney Lee has played very well since uh, coming back from that sinus cavity injury. Has checked in, as has Anthony Johnson. Howard putting moves on Perkins. Basketball count, but a foul. And it's that's uh, the second on Perkins. Uh, this is the luxury that Doc Rivers has. You come back with Glenn Davis, with Perkins picking up two fouls, though you are smaller. If I'm Dwight Howard, I continue to do the same thing. Put my head down or put the pressure on the interior of the Celtics. Davis listed at the 6'9". Howard about 6'11", perhaps 7 foot. Anthony Johnson played by Stefan Nalbury. Eddie House on Courtney Lee and here's Tony Batie Tony, Tony Batie does have that good touch and he's extended to an eight point Orlando Lee well Stan Van Gundy has kind of gone to the twin tower look of Howard and Batie and then the 6'10 small forward of Hito Turkoglu so a very big front line for the Magic Tony Batie a one time member of the Celtics Davis kicks it out Scalabrini 4-3 yes from downtown. Well, Davis broke it up with a foul. And it's on Davis for the push on Howard. Well, when you're not feeling well, you don't want to exert too much energy. And right there, Scalabrini just going to the open spot and knocking down the jump shot because you want to conserve energy as the game goes on. 
Orlando up by five as this second quarter gets underway. Marv Albert with Reggie Miller and David Aldridge. It is game five of the best of seven. Series tied at two. Here's Pergola with a hard driving move. And he is fouled. Did well to get that shot off. That would have counted. Foul is on Scalabrini, his first. And three quick team fouls by the Celtics in this second quarter. So here's Hito Turgaloo. Just four for 14 from the field. And in game four, his best game in the uh, series, Orlando's win at home in game three. 24 points, did a good job playing the point. Struggled with his shot for a good portion of the uh, series against Philadelphia, and then turned it around in games four and six. And returned to his role as uh, missed the fourth quarter with that buzzer beater. In game four, Magic with their first three throws of the night, and they now lead it 26 to 19. Marbury gets it back to Davis. Davis goes right at Howard. His offensive game has really matured with the more minutes, obviously, with Kevin Garnett going down because before, strictly a jump shooter. Davis three of six from the field. Here's the T. Long rebound is handled by Pierce. Pierce accelerates. Oh, he made a double dribble there. Gets it to House. A wide open shot. Yes! That's a two pointer. Had a foot on the line. That's the first time Eddie House has had any space in the last two games. Well, definitely a breakdown in the defensive talking for the Magic because there's nowhere there was Courtney Lee around Eddie House. This crowd getting back into it, but the Celtics now within three. The team. Howard gets to it. Howard with the stuff. White Howard controlling the boards. That's ten rebounds. His first field goal. And Orlando is up by five. Marbury and House in the backcourt. Davis, Pierce, and Scalabrini up front. Here's Marbury with the drive. Davis with the rebound. Pops it back out. Lee all over House once again. Courtney Lee has done a tremendous job defensively on Eddie House. Celtics having difficulty on this possession, locating a shot. Aubrey off the mark. This is a pretty good defensive unit on the floor for the Magic with the twin towers of Viti and Howard. Courtney Lee, an excellent perimeter defender. Three minutes gone by in the second. T's pass broken up. Oh, it's taken by Davis, and he's fouled by Batiste. Probably gave it to you at both ends of the floor, and Reggie Lewis, a carbon copy of myself, probably one of the best mid-range players. And he has rims out, Reggie Lewis. Late Reggie Lewis, former Boston Celtic. You say there was a nice Reggie's mailbag. Is that a knock at previous ones you've had? Uh, Wait a second. It, it was tough to, to let people know who really, I see. you know, guarded me the toughest. Foul is on Scalabrini. And that is the fourth team foul on the Celtics. Four minutes gone by in the second quarter. And Orlando is up by five. Right now, the Magic need to take the ball to the hole. Already in the penalty. Here's Lee. Courtney Lee from downtown. So, the Magic 3 of 7 from beyond that three-point line. Coming off the 5 for 27 in game four on Sunday. Davis drawing the uh, double team. Marching for Tot has come on, and he's defending on... Uh, Davis and a foul is called. So it is on Gortat. Gortat played very well the other night. Ten minutes, four, four, eight points, four rebounds. Had a terrific game six in that opening round against the uh, Sixers when White Howard sat out because of a suspension. And uh, Gortat was in the starting lineup filling in for Howard. Nice pass from Allen, who just checked back in. 
Glenn Davis would have gathered himself right there. He could have had an and one if he would have waited for Rashard Lewis to come down on the rotation over. Turgaloo changed his mind. Gortat gets inside. I tell you, Marchand Gortat, who is a restricted free agent after this season, has a lot of teams looking at him with great interest. Davis not able to hit. Rebounded by Scott Abrini. Throws it back out. Here's House on a catch and shoot for three. The Celtics continue to struggle at the offensive end. Just 9 for 31. That's 29%. Lewis not able to hit, and it's deflected out of bounds. Marching Gortat, who was uh, marching footed, he was telling us the other day, Leon fall down. <laughs> I'm assuming from a punch, but Leon also got up and uh, went on to defeat. Still off. <laughs> yeah, to defeat Yadus, who did win a bronze medal, should be pointed out. And uh, Marching is very proud of his of his father. Gortat doing a good job of keeping the ball alive on that position right there. Anthony Johnson kept it alive. Here's Lee. And finally, House able to get to it. Leon fall down. And that wouldn't be the first time for Leon. <laughs> Here's Davis. Lost the handle and recovered. Scalabrini for three. Yes! Ryan Scalabrini. Although under the weather... As they say, flu-like symptoms. Can you explain what that means? You need to have the flu. You're sick. Basically, yes. you're sick. But how about Glenn Davis? And Eddie House comes up with the steal. There's House. Yes! The three by Scott Brady, followed by the steal, and the pocket by House leads to a magic timeout. Well, Howdy, Calabrini, as well as Eddie House, accounts for all of them. And you see how well the, the Celtics did off the bench in that opening round series against the Bulls, and then games one through three. Nice move by Rashad Lewis, able to go glass, and he's hit five of six, leading the way for the Magic with 10 points. 35 28, Orlando. White Howard. Back on the floor up front along with Richard Lewis and Hito Turgaloo. There's Scalabrini swinging inside, went to the left hand. Obviously feeling pretty good about himself after hitting a couple of threes. As Turgaloo hooks the pass down low and Howard is able to stuff. Howard attack the lane, attack the basket, try to get the ball down low to Dwight Howard and good things are going to come. Second field goal for Howard. Four points along with 11 rebounds. Here's House. Yes! He was able to make the move away from Lee. Again, a two-point shot for House. He has six points. Orlando with a 37-30 lead. Quick moving first half. Very few free throws. Lewis battling for position and again banks it home. Well, you know, those two used to play together in Seattle. Ray Allen, Rashard Lewis. Little familiarity right there down low, understanding Ray Allen cannot guard Lewis on the post. House getting that pass inside. Good ball movement. Scalabrini. Rebounders snatched by Rondo. Rondo already with six rebounds for the Celtics. And away from the ball, a foul is called. Turgaloo got involved with Allen. And the foul is on Hito. And you look at Ray Allen's stat line with 341 left in this second quarter. 16 minutes, 0 for 4 from the field, no points. You talked about that big 51-point game in game six against Chicago. He took 32 field goals tonight. He was 18 of 32 in that game for 51 points. Only four field goal attempts tonight. They need his offensive production if they're going to be successful against the Magic. Both teams make changes. Kendrick Perkins returning. J.J. Redick. As Mikhail Petras back on the floor for Orlando. Here's Allen. Yes! 
a three for Ray Allen, who missed his previous 11 from downtown. Orlando up by six as we approach three minutes to play in the first half. Howard had it knocked away. Good job again by Perkins. Allen protecting the ball on Petrus. Met by Howard and threw it away. Alston picked it off. Rondo back. Here's Alston to the reverse. And he'll head to the line. Two shots coming up for Rafer Alston. A programming reminder, don't miss the new season premiere of Leverage, starring Timothy Hutton this July, right here on TNT. And a foul on Rondo, that is his second. So Alston at the line for the first time, only free throws three and four for the Magic in this uh, first half. Rafer just one for seven in game four, returning from that one game suspension against the Sixers in that uh, first round series. He averaged better than 15 points a game. You see the shooting and you can see the comparative numbers here against Boston. And you look at the three points he won, 8% from beyond the arc. And really, it's been both point guards who have struggled for the Magic. Anthony Johnson as well. And don't be surprised if they go to that big lineup in the fourth quarter with Turkoglu at the point guard position with J.J. Redick and Courtney Lee. Double up on Pierce. Here's Rondo. Oh, what a move he made on Alston. Could not finish. And it's captured by Lewis. Alston gets a down low to Petrus. Petrus wide open for three. And the ball back to the Celtics. Two and a half remaining. Wow. Issues. Wow, we're going to have to work on our own tonight, Mark. He, he walked off. He's gone. He's gone. They double up on Pierce. Perkins. And on the back tap, it's taken by Reddick. They try to tie him up, and they succeed. It'll be a jump ball. A oh, Paul's back. We're all right. He gets that way sometimes. Oh, he's, that guy's a real sensitive. Yes. And if you look at Kinder Perkins, he keeps kind of massaging and holding that left shoulder of his. I don't know if he's getting banged by Dwight Howard or not, but we've got something to look forward to as the game progresses here. Redick and Rondo. And it's controlled by Allen. Being played here by Alston. Two minutes to play in the corner. Pierce. Yes. It's a five-point Magically, just under two to go in this first half. Let it getting the step. Howard is there to put it down. Howard, or excuse me, J.J. Reddick got the step, and all the Celtics had their backs turned, so it was a wide-open layup that was missed by Reddick, but the nice finish by Dwight Howard. Six points, 12 rebounds for Howard. Allen again throws it away. Picked off by Alston. That's his second straight tur turnover. He's just not able to hit the three, but it bounces back to Reddick. Here's Lewis. Perkins with the rebound. That looks like he'll be very lucky. Right now, the Magic has just missed some easy shots. Pierce. Paul Pierce once again hitting the jump shot. Three of six. 10 points at all. So the Celtics are down by five. Alston for three. Rayford Alston. Back to it at the offensive end. He has nine points. Stan Van Gundy says it's as simple as our guards just making shots. Rondo's pass not handled by, by Davis. It's a terrible pass by Rondo. You cannot throw the ball or deliver the ball at the ankles of one of your big men. Very quiet first half for Rajon Rondo. One of five from the field. Does have six rebounds. Three assists. Orlando with an eight-point lead. Alston. Allen with the rebound. 
the Celtics can hold for a final shot of this first half. We're down to 10 seconds. And a foul is called away from the ball. Magic did have a, a foul to give. It is on Petrus. That's his second. And now Doc Rivers takes a 20-second timeout with nine seconds to play in the half. Give an easy one here to the Celtics with under 10 seconds left in the second quarter. Rondo back on the floor. Out of three, out of two. Here's Davis, way off. And that's the end of the first half. And a good one for Orlando. Not getting it done. And Ray for Alston and Rashard Lewis supplying the offense for the Magic. Lewis, the high point man with 12, and Alston with nine. Lewis being played here by Perkins. Lewis goes right at him. Rebounded by Pierce. As we mentioned earlier, a very quiet first half for Rajon Rondo. Rondo played by Alston. Here's Pierce putting a move on Turgaloo. Lost it. Last touch by Alston. Quick check of the first half statistics. Orlando 48% shooting. Boston just 36% percent points in the paint favor of the magic and uh, the rebounding 24 20 for orlando 12 for dwight howard off the board there's allen coming off the pick and he continues to struggle now ray Allen's had his moments uh, certainly in the opening round against philadelphia here is alston with the bucket it counts and the foul but ray allen with big problems in this series against Orlando, as you see, Alston put on the move. Ray did have a move. Ray did have a strong game too. But can you relate to what Ray is going through? Well, you know, the older you get, especially for a jump shooter, it takes so much out of you to run off screens left and right, and to exert a lot of energy in shooting jump shots. And you know, because he's had some big games during this postseason in the first round against Chicago. I just don't think he's getting enough quality looks and quality shots. And you know, Father Time catches up to all of us. But Ray has a lot of game left in him, but he has to get more quality shots to be effective. A Celtic foul on Pierce, his second. Rondo. Looks like he took a hit, was able to score. Rondo! Magic with a 48 39 lead. Turgenew played by Davis. Goes to the crossover and hits. Beautiful move by Hito Turgenew. And he had big baby Davis dancing right there on that crossover. Nice step back by Turgenew. Ten points for Turgenew. Magic now with three players in double figures. Rondo with the kill. He's showing some signs here at the start of the third. Okay, back to back basket. We talked about maybe Lands kind of get you going. There's two Lands there for Rondo. Turgler wide open for three. Rebounded by Howard. 13 rebounds for Dwight Howard. Howard from Alston. Davis able to pull it down. Rondo had it slapped away. Allen is back. Reddick pulls it up for three. Back tap by Howard, but handled by Perkins. Pierce going at Howard and draws the foul. Let's check in with David Aldridge. David. Well, guys, Doc Rivers said that they're going to have to live with Ray for Alston making those shots if he makes them even though he would like him to close out a little bit more on him so he didn't have wide open looks. He said Rajon Rondo has to also make plays. He doesn't necessarily have to score for Boston, but he has to make plays because Alston's playing off for him. So basically the first half came down to Skip Alston making shots and Rondo not making shots. Marv? All right, here's Pierce to the line, fouled by Howard. He picked up a second. Well, Pierce, the only Celtic to get to the free throw line. 
He's five for five at the line. Twelve points for Pierce. Orlando with a seven point lead. This is game five of the Eastern Conference semifinal of the series. Even at two, game six back in Orlando on Thursday night. Howard way off, handled by Austin. Perkins, another fabulous job on the defensive end. Rondo, Howard with yet another rebound, and a foul on Howard, reaching out and making contact with Rondo. Well, he basically shoved Rajon Rondo out the way as Rondo was kind of going for the steal right here. Dwight Howard had already secured the rebound. What you're trying to do right now is get the ball up the court to your point guard. There's no reason to shove Rondo now. You've already done your job. Get the ball to Austin and get the get the ball up the court. Number three on Howard. Rondo played well by Austin and came up short, and then Rondo commits the foul. Yeah, I might agree with Rondo on that. It looked like he got a slapped on the wrist as he went in there and tried to do another teardrop. That's three on Rondo. Let's get back to David. Well, Marv, you, right before the start of the second half, we saw the officials bring both Stan Van Gundy and Doc Rivers together before tip-off. And basically, the message to both of the coaches was, quit crying about calls. Let us make these calls. Let us officiate this game. Referees trying to take control before things maybe get a little out of hand in the second half, Marv. All right, thanks, David. Here's Alston firing one. It's all going right for Rafer Alston. He thought he was fouled. Rafer now has 14 points. The Magic up by nine. Looking to take a three games to two lead in this series and take it back to Orlando. Davis. Rebounded by Alston. Turgalo using the pick. Not able to hit from downtown. Rebound Perkins. Rafer Alston is not even thinking about guarding Rondo. He's just leaving his man and coming to double Paul Pierce anytime he wants. And they double up on uh, Pierce. Defensive three is called on the Magic. So a technical foul awarded to the Celtics. Ray Allen will shoot it. If Rondo wants to take the next step and be a great point guard this summer, if I'm him, I take a month off after the season to let your body heal. And then I get into the gym and I shoot 500 to 700. 15 to 22 foot jump shots to get that down consistently and I'd shoot over a thousand teardrops since he likes to do that teardrop shot a la Tony Parker Tony Parker was not a great shooter when he came in the league if he wants to take that next step Allen rims out on that the three point attempt yeah, Tony Parker would be the perfect, perfect. example yeah, for Rajon Rondo because uh, he came a long way with not only the teardrop, but the uh, perimeter shot. And Perkins took a shot to the side of the head. Perkins gives it right back to Pierce. And Pierce continues to hit from all angles. 14 points for Pierce. It's a 52-46 Orlando lead. And... Well, that, back and review it now, Marv, so that's going to stand at 52-46 right now. And, and it appear that he just did nip the line with his toe. Well, he can't go back at it now, but from that angle, it looked like it was a, a deuce. And that's a three for Rashard Lewis, who has had a magnificent game. 7 of 10, 15 points. The Magic up 55-46. Marching for top. Back on the floor, coming off to play Howard as the, the foul is called. That's two on Gortat. White Howard sitting down after he picked up a quick two in this third quarter for three and all. White Howard has been in foul trouble the last three games. And now Rafer Alston pointing out to the official Bill Spooner. Apparently, there is a wet spot. On the floor, being supervised very well. well. Already the Magic, with five three-pointers made, they had five all of game four, five of 27. Tonight, five of 15, only 33%, but they're not shooting as many threes. 
better ball movement tonight. Allen played by Reddick. He's just one of seven from the field. Rondo saving that pass. Shot clock is down to two, down to one. Rondo fires. Rebounded by Davis. Allen passed on a three. Here's Rondo. Work shot. Offensive foul. That's number four on Rajon Rondo. Right here, Rondo with the teardrop and Gortat doing a good job of moving his feet, sliding over. He's outside the restricted area. Rondo picks up his fourth, has to go to the bench. Six points. Seven, he does have seven rebounds. Stefan Marbury played briefly in the first half, comes on for Rondo. Here's Lewis, rebound Perkins in a battle with Gortat. So Marbury now at the point. Marbury and Allen in the backcourt. Pierce up front with Perkins and Davis. Good job by Turgaloo. Not allowing Pierce to make the cut. Marbury and rebounded by Lewis. This is a great opportunity with Rondo on foul trouble for him to step up and play well in the point guard position. They were expecting big things when they signed him right after the All-Star break. Marbury has been reluctant to shoot the ball. He did in game one, had that good first half, but he's been deferential. Just trying to set people up. Another Celtic turnover. Tony Allen's third. And here's Turgaloo popping it out. Reddick for three. For Tot and Davis in a battle. And a foul on Davis. Davis trying to block out for Tot. Picks up his second. And the 13 foul on the Celtics. The Magic were making some of these, in, in my opinion, wide open three point shots. This game easily could have been up to 20 points. And they certainly had good looks the other night in Orlando, but hit only five of 27 from beyond that uh, three point line. The three point shooting, a staple during the regular season, has been way off in this series. Gortat, nice feed from Reddick to set it up for Gortat. And Orlando matches its biggest lead of the game. Let's see if they're going to go to that 32, as Doc Rivers calls it, a 3-2, and have the switch with J.J. Reddick. Marbury open for three. And a three-bounder by Lewis. He is fouled by Davis. That's three on Davis. Step Stephon Marbury in a seven minutes 0 for four from the field. Nice pass here from Reddick. Well, Reddick, if you're struggling offensively, what he is, only one of six from the field, there's other things you can do. Especially taking the ball off the dribble to get into the teeth of the defense. Nice pass to Gortai. That's three assists for JJ Reddick. Shot clock to seven. Here's Turgula off the dribble, lost control. Doc Rivers now going with Marbury and Allen in the backcourt. Pierce, Perkins, and Davis up front. The only offense for the Celtics has come from Paul Pierce. 14 points. The only Celtic in double figures. Perkins pass broken up by Gortat. And Orlando back to the offense. Four teams with eight turnovers. Gortat. Back comes Pierce. Perkins. Blocked by Gortat. Austin with the lead. Gortat not able to control. Has not been pretty basketball here in the uh, third quarter. And the foul is called as Davis hits the floor. So he will head to the line. And the foul is on Lewis, his first. Well, you can log on to NBA.com to enter the Barkley Zone. Exclusive interviews, opinion, and analysis straight from Sir Charles only on NBA.com.
Reggie, the Celtics scoreless the last three minutes and 45 seconds. They are down by 11. As we come up on three and a half minutes to play here in the third. Well, right now, Doc has probably put in his best offensive lineup with both Ray Allen and Eddie House on the wings. You've got Paul Pierce, who's been the only offense tonight, 14 points on 4-7 shooting, as well as Glenn Davis. So let's see offensively if this unit can kind of find some kind of way to get some ball movement and get some easy ones. Eight points for Davis. He scored the first four points for the Celtics tonight since then one of seven from the field. Boston is down by nine. The Cleveland Cavaliers waiting in the wings for the winner of this series. Lee on a fadeaway. Rebound Perkins. Cavaliers wrapping matters up against the Hawks last night. They've won all eight of their uh, playoff games. Sweep of Detroit, then Atlanta. Perkins through the double. Here's House who just checked back in. House coming on from Marbury. Shot clock to three. Allen goes behind the back and he scores. Beautiful move by Ray Allen. Let's see if that can get Allen going. Brown on its feet. Trying to get the Celtics going. Lewis off the fake. Lewis to the bucket and he scores. Rashard Lewis with 17. Such a tough cover at 6'10. Gives you that pump fake. Lynn Davis goes for it. Couple dribbles in. Nice little lay in. 59 50. Orlando. Pierce had it slapped away by Lee. A recovery for Davis. And he is fouled. He was blocked. So Davis will head back to the line. Big shot by Glenn Davis in game four. Thought that it was going to come easy here coming home to TD Bank North Garden, and it hasn't. He wants the guys to raise their energy level and raise their heads. Davis now three of three at the line. Fouled a moment ago in the act. Both teams have four team fouls. Big roar from the crowd a moment ago as they posted on the uh, scoreboard that the uh, Bruins defeated the Lightning in Carolina 4-2. to two. That series now tied at three, so game seven will be back here in Boston on Thursday night. Dwight Howard has been sitting out the last five minutes, and it really has not cost the Magic. He went out after picking up a third foul, and Gortat once again has come on and done a nice job. Gortat able to stop Pierce. Nice play. Davis from Perkins. A little run here by the Celtics. They move with him five. And that's what Doc Rivers is talking about, trusting your teammates. Paul Pierce gives the ball up to Kendra Perkins. Trust baby Davis will finish from there. Petrus for three. Mikhail Petrus, who loves that corner three, knocks it down, extends to an eight-point Orlando lead. Magic has a lot of three-point weapons on the floor here. Allen not allowed to shoot the three, but he's fouled by Petrus. And that puts Orlando over. The foul limits are Ray Allen, a 95% free throw shooter during the regular season. Second in that department behind Jose Calderon. Toronto will shoot a pair. And these are two good possessions for Ray Allen. You get a lay-in with the shot clock running down. You're struggling from the field. Maybe that can get him going. And then you come back and you kind of get your free throw, your rhythm going to the free throw line with two uh, free throws here. Maybe that can get his stroke going from the outside because other than Paul Pierce and Glenn Davis who are in double digits, the Celtics need someone else to step up offensively. The Magic by six. As we come up on a minute remaining. And the third. Boston to the line nine times in this third quarter. They've hit all nine. Orlando with just one free throw in the quarter. Alston. Oh, he is feeling it here tonight. Rafer Alston with a big bounce back game. Six of 12. 
16 points. Hesitation move by Pierce. Going at Lee. Yes! And the foul. Foul on Lee. That is his first. And this is that 32 play. It's a 3-2 pick and roll. And you're looking for the switch. If you're Paul Pierce, you get the smaller Courtney Lee on you. Take him into the post. Go right through his arms. Rookie gets the foul. You go to the line. Here's six of six at the line. Here's Turkoglu coming on for Lee. 37 seconds remaining in the third. And Pierce trying to bring the Celtics within five. Orlando is led by as many as 11. Turkoglu guarded by Pierce. Turgaloo going at Perkins. It counts and the foul. What a move by Hito Turgaloo. The Magic have an answer. Every single time it seems like the Celtics are getting ready to make a run, someone on the Magic makes a move, hits a three-pointer right here at Turgaloo, fakes going middle, goes baseline right into the body of Perkins, picks up the foul to the line for the end one. That's three on Perkins. Three-point play for Turgaloo. 13 points in all. Two-second differential between the game clock and, and shot clock as this third quarter comes to a close. Pierce looking to set it up. Allen being guarded tightly by Petrus. Pierce looking for Allen. And then takes the shot. Rebounded by Davis. This house too late for Montana. Able to knock down it. Rivers, one-time head coach of the Orlando Magic. Lives in Orlando in the in the offseason. Won coach of the year honors uh, with the Magic. Allen is way off on that three-point shot. As this fourth quarter gets underway, White Howard has returned. Playing with the three fouls. Anthony Johnson now at the point. Tony Batte has checked back in. Turgaloo. Here's Petrus. Shot clock to six. And uh, Howard with the bucket. Scalabrini looking to foul him but did not prevent the shot. So Scalabrini called for the foul and uh, Howard will go to the line. Well, excellent ball movement around the court for the Magic. And if you're going to grab Dwight Howard, you got to grab him up top before he can get the ball above his shoulders. He's too strong once he gets it above his shoulders. Howard to the line for the first time. Hit six of eight the other night in Orlando, which is good free throw shooting for Dwight Howard and able to knock it down. Three point play for Dwight. The Magic back up by 11. Stefan Marbury has checked back in along with Eddie House and uh, Scalabrini. Well, Pierce. Back for Marbury, open shot, and he tips up his first. His previous four shots. 70 to 61, Orlando. The T with the open opportunity. Well, he can do that. He can stretch the floor in a pick and pop situation. This was that lineup in that second quarter that Stan Van Gundy went to. His twin tower look with 6'10 Turkoglu at the small forward position. So you're very big, but you're defensive minded. Marbury looks to make the turn, and the foul is called on Johnson. A minute and a half gone by in the fourth quarter. Game five of this Eastern Conference semifinal series. They're even at two. Cavaliers await the winner for the Eastern Conference final. Marbury again. And he's hit two in a row. Like I said, maybe this is a chance with Rondo on the bench with foul trouble for Marbury offensively to kind of click a little bit with the Celtics. Marbury had that one good run in this series. Game one, came out looking for a shot, played nine minutes, first half, scored eight points. 
Down to six on the 24. Pergolo nearly traveled and has to force a three. House for three. Rebounded by Petrus. Nine point. Magic lead. And a foul is called as uh, House and uh, Howard came together. It's a block on Eddie House. And Howard's going to have to be very careful here. He easily could have picked up his fourth foul here early in the fourth quarter. Going to make sure those picks are set. Looked like he moved a little bit, but this one Mike Callahan didn't see it that way. Turgalo. Nice fake. It counts on the foul. The foul on Perkins. Turgalo able to make the turn, got the step on Pierce, met on the switch, and was able to take advantage. Turgalo doing a good job of ball faking every single time the ball comes to him behind the arc. And a couple dribbles in, and Perkins is just a little bit old or late rotating over. His body comes late, picks up his fourth foul. Now he has to go to the bench as Glenn Davis checks in. A strong game for Hito Turgalo. Completes the uh, three-point play. He has 16. And Perkins. His fourth foul. Sit down with four points, nine rebounds. Did a good job defensively early against Dwight Howard. Pierce had it knocked away into the cover. Got blocked down to six. Here's Pierce. Good job defensively here by the Magic. Yeah, but the Magic, you know, he's the really only, only real threat on the floor, so all the defense is catered to him. Someone else has to make a shot for the Celtics. The lead pass to Petrus. Beautifully done. Anthony Johnson. From Craig Sager. We'll have it all from Staples in L.A. Eight and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Marbury for three. So he has caught fire. Stephon Marbury missed his first four shots. He's hit his last three. Orlando had a 13-4 run going the last three and a half minutes, including three conventional three-point plays. The T. Rebound house. Seven quick points by Stephon Marbury. Marbury now played by Petrus. Pulls it back. Scalabrini set the pick. Marbury feels it. Yes! This is the old Stephon Marbury coming off pick and roll. Using those legs to get up in that extension of that jump shot. Marbury has the Celtics all nine of Boston's points in this fourth quarter. And they're on their feet. Nice play, but T on the pass from Turgalo. 6'10 being able to look over the defense. You think he's going to go for the jump shot? Finds a wide open Tony Petit down low for the lay in. Davis challenges. Howard hits in the hook. And Howard really can't go after blocks or body up because he doesn't want to pick up his fourth foul. Celtics have come out of the offensive end following the drought. Five minutes gone by in the fourth. Howard from Turgaloo. Beautiful play. Hito Turgaloo with his sixth assist. Well, if you look at the bunch that's on the floor for the Celtics, this is not their defensive stopping unit. This is more of their scoring, trying to get back into the ball game unit. Davis trying to put moves on Howard. And once again goes with the hook shot. So Big Baby Davis coming on, 16 points. Celtics down by nine. And scoring is not the problem for the Celtics. They need stops. The T over Allen. That is a mismatch. Tony the T. 
with the decisive height advantage on on Ray Allen. How about the T? Eight points off the bench for the Magic. Marbury, yes, and the foul! An impressive stint for Stephon Marbury in the fourth quarter. Very important for Stephon Marbury to continue to play well in these playoffs. He says that after everything that happened with New York this season not playing, he said, I just came here to play basketball. I don't want to do anything else. Mar. All right, David and Stephon Marbury with 12 points. All have come in this uh, fourth quarter. Marbury side is a free agent after the Knicks poured out his contract. It's an eight-point Orlando lead. Here is Turkle going high off glass. And as you mentioned, Reggie, the Celtic group able to do it at the offensive end, but not able to get stops. Well, your two best defenders are on the bench, and Paul Pierce and Kendrick Perkins. Howard changed that shot attempt from Marbury. Here's Alston. And the matchup is Alston and Marbury, a couple of guys from, from New York City going at each other. Alston for three. Good hustle by Petrus. Quick to the ball. Just under five minutes remaining in the fourth. Lewis is fouled. Hit by Scalabrini. That's four on Scalabrini. Talking earlier about the fact that the Celtics looking for more scoring. Pierce has done the job with 17 points. And the only other Celtics in double figures. Davis now with 16 and Marbury with 12. But look at Allen, Rondo, and, and Perkins. Ray Allen, two of nine. Perkins, two of six. Not a good game for Rondo. Three for ten to six points. Rondo checks back in. Sat out for 13 minutes after picking up a fourth foul. Lewis trying to draw the foul on Davis. No call, and Boston takes over. Well, that's better body control for Glenn Davis right there. You have to get into the body of Vito Turkoglu and Richard Lewis. Too much space out here given for the Magic offensive players. Here's play by Lewis. Davis, yes. Glenn Davis doing a nice job once again. He now has 18 points. He's hit 7 of 14. And the Orlando lead is down to 8. They've led by as many as 14. They seek to take a 3-2 lead in this series. Lewis for 3. Pierce with the rebound. job by Turgaloo. Davis on the fake. Davis, yes! Why not? Glenn Davis very much the same way in the fourth quarter as he got to. In the postseason, he's taken advantage. The magic lead is six. They led by as many as 14. Just under four remaining in the fourth. Lewis lost it. Rondo and Allen in the backcourt. Perkins, Pierce, and Davis on the front line. Rondo with a backcourt pass. Pierce with the bucket. The lead is down to four. So a nice pick and roll and flare screens on both sides of the floor for the Celtics. Rondo doing a good job finding the backcourt by Paul Pierce for the lay-in. And these teams get together. It seems as uh, Turkler flips it outside to Lewis, who fires for three, way off, rebounded by Rondo. We've had a number of games where the Celtics have been able to come from behind against Orlando. Rondo came up short, last touch by the Magic. And that goes back to the regular season where Boston has come back against Orlando. Oh, you think Rondo had a wide open lane right here, just couldn't finish at the rim. Just under three to go in the fourth. Allen draws the double. Allen loses Reddick on a pick. It's tipped out of bounds. 
Last touch by Lewis of the Magic. Plenty of time here on the shot clock for the Celtics. 85-81. Orlando with 2.44 remaining in the fourth quarter. Pierce inbounds to Davis. Pierce had it knocked away, recovered by Allen. Allen for Perkins, and he scores with the two-point magic lead. And everyone was watching Ray Allen, thinking that he was going to go up with the shot, with the shot clock running down. Perkins wide open underneath. 8-0-1 for the Celtics. Shot clock down to seven. Togolo with the step. Togolo lost control. Boston ball. And this is the championship defense that Doc Rivers has been waiting on to see. You've got your best perimeter and interior defenders in Kendrick Perkins, Rondo Pierce. Coming up on two minutes to play in the fourth. Perkins trying to get it to Rondo. Scramble for the ball. Rondo with the save. Here's Davis. Rebounded by Turgaloo. Wide open shot for Davis. Good ask for a better look is your Glenn Davis. Alston. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. Rondo back on it. I think he was just trying to get it on the rim so Howard could finish. Just under a minute and a half left in the fourth. The Magic with an 85-83 lead. Ray Allen time. Allen scores for three! Boston has taken a one-point lead. They've come from 14 down. Gave him a lift offensively the only way you were going to get back into this ball game you had to stop the magic a minute 20 left in the fourth Austin watched by Rondo the last two possessions for Orlando very ugly broken up by Allen recovered by Austin for three rebounded by Reddick and then he lost it the ball back to the Celtics. Excellent defense by the Celtics. Contesting every shot. The pick and roll. The bad pass by the Magic. And the wide open miss by Rafer Austin. Final minute of the fourth. One point. Celtic lead. After trailing by as many as 14. Remember in game one, they came back from a 28-point deficit, although the Magic were able to pull it out. Shot clock down to four. Rondo fires one. Comes up short. Did not make contact with the rim, although Perkins says it did. You, you can't worry about the call that the officials made. Right now, with 36 seconds left in this game, you need to come up with a stop. Rondo will look to throw in. Played by Alston. And takes a timeout. Did not want to get hit with the uh, five-second call. So Boston still has a timeout remaining. The last three possessions by Orlando were just awful. And the Celtics able to take advantage with 11 consecutive points. And this is a tough play here by Turkoglu right here. Thinking he was going to get the call, and really, what is Ray for Austin doing right here? Just kind of throwing it in the air, thinking that Howard is going to clean it up. And right here, bad pass by Richard Lewis, misses the three. Rondo, good presence of mind, to knock the ball off of Howard as it goes out as Paul Pierce celebrates with his team up one. Once again, the Celtics will look to. Inbound, 36 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. They have 23 on the shot clock, and they have a one-point lead. And where the 
Rondo and the Celtics are taking the ball out as it looks like Paul Pierce will be taking the ball out. We call that coffin corner. You never want to have the, the ball down that low because there's only so many angles where you can throw the ball in. You've got to be real careful here if you're Paul Pierce. They do have one timeout left. Pierce now able to get it in and throw it to the backcourt. That's, that's what they did with Rondo in control. Down to 15 on the shot clock. Down to 10. Here's Davis putting a move on Lewis. Down to two on the 24. Allen shoots it. Just raised the rim and get the Celtics. And he gets to it and a foul given by Trogolo. Second shot opportunities for the second and the inability of the Magic to come up with the rebound has hurt them in the closing moments of this game. Is this a new Celtic strategy? Just graze the rim. <laughs> well, they had a foul to give, the Magic did. Ray Allen with the shot clock running down, takes a look and just gets the ball on the rim. Howard got, was able to get a hand on it. He does have 17 rebounds tonight. Down to 9.5 remaining in the quarter. And Orlando will have to foul. They do right there. House, who just came in, hit by Lee. So house to the line in the series he's hit five of six Eddie house not a guy goes to the line frequently 79 percent during the regular season eight point five to go on the fourth so boston now leads by two, and they are 16 for 16 at the line. And if you're Stan Van Gundy and the Magic, there's got to be somewhat, even though the game is not over, a pit in your stomach. They led basically throughout this game. Ball movement was fantastic until, I'd say, the five-minute mark of that fourth quarter, and it looked like everyone started to go one-on-one -on -one thinking the game was over. House hits both. Boston is up by three. Timeout is called by Orlando. The Celtics with 13 unanswered points to take this lead. Let's go back to the keys that you set up at the start of the telecast. Question was, what does Orlando have to do to come back from that very tough loss the other night? Well, you wanted them to make the three. Tonight, they struggled again. Six of 23 from three-point land. They were five of 27 in game four. You wanted them to use their size. Well, they didn't use their size on those last two possessions by the Celtics, not coming up with defensive rebounds. And though Howard, who had 11 rebounds in that first quarter, 17 rebounds on tonight, but could not get it going offensively for the Magic. Now, Reggie, how does Doc Rivers play it? Coaches have different philosophies. When you're up by three, final seconds, so lots of time remaining with uh, eight and a half seconds to go. Do you foul in two-point territory? Well, you're going to get the team that's very potent from three-point land and that is one of their top weapons in their arsenal. If I'm Doc Rivers, I play the foul game. I make them earn it at the free throw line. Well, they're just 6 for 23 tonight. They come off a poor shooting performance from three-point land in game four. Turgula will inbound. Let's see how the Celtics play it. Gets it in. Lewis is fouled, and a good foul by Pierce, not allowing Lewis to even come close to attempting the shot. Well, we know all the controversy that's going on with the South, oh, excuse me, with the uh, Denver Nuggets as well as the Dallas Mavericks. This is how you foul to make sure someone is going to the line. You wrap your arms around Richard Lewis as Paul Pierce does, sending Lewis to the line for two free throws. And Lewis to the line for the 
first time tonight during the regular season. An excellent free throw shooter, 84 percent. And Rashard getting the treatment from the crowd with seven and three tenths seconds to go in this fourth quarter. Lewis with 17 points is not scored here on the fourth. Celtics 88, the Magic 86. Boston with one timeout remaining. Orlando one timeout remaining. Both teams are over the foul limit. Lewis hitting on both. It's a one-point Celtic lead. Allen off the inbounds. That's the man that the Celtics wanted to have the ball as he is immediately fouled with six and two ten seconds remaining. Doc Rivers did a, a good job of not calling a timeout right there, bringing Eddie House back in, another free throw shooter, electing to trust Rondo to get the ball in to the second best free throw shooter percentage wise on the year behind Jose Calderon, Ray Allen at 95%. Allen is three of three at the line. Magic, you have that one timeout left. Celtics 89, Magic 87. Another wild one here in Boston. As Orlando led by as many as 14, led, as you mentioned, virtually all the way. Boston had an 8 6 lead in the opening minutes. And then it was all magic. Well, Allen connects on both. Celtics back to the three-point lead. Orlando will use its final timeout as we check in with Ernie Johnson back in our Atlanta studios. Ernie, yeah, more timeouts left. And the, Mag uh, the Celtics have gone with a small lineup with Paul Pierce at the four position and Glenn Davis playing... Dwight Howard down low at 6'8". Looks like the Magic are confused on their play, and that's inexcusable coming out of a timeout. All right, Turgula will look to inbound. Having trouble, now gets it in, and there's a foul, and that's the man they wanted a foul, Dwight Howard. And that, that's the disadvantage of having Dwight Howard on the floor in the closing moments. You've got a guy who's only shooting 55% in this series alone 59 percent on the year but howard had to come to the ball because turgulu could not find anyone and they did not have any timeouts remaining howard one of one at the line didn't shoot well at the line in game four but a very poor free throw shooter that stroke looks pretty good though well think about the two different philosophies by the coaches Doc Rivers was able to get the ball to their best free throw shooter in Ray Allen at 95%. Stan Van Gundy and the Magic, they get the ball to arguably the worst free throw shooter on the floor for the Magic, though he has made his first free throw in Dwight Howard. Now the question is, with five and nine, ten seconds remaining in the fourth was Howard. Try to miss it on purpose off the rim because the Magic do not have any timeouts for any. Well, do we know if it's a real miss or not? Yes, he tries when he hit the rim. Recovered by Davis and a foul. They try to tie him up. Orlando saying, hey, we, we got a jump ball, but Mike Callahan, the official, says no. The foul is called on Rashard Lewis. We're down to four and six ten seconds remaining as Davis heads to the line. And that actually was a pretty good miss on purpose by Dwight Howard. A little double bank up there, which allowed Tony Bettine and Rashard Lewis to try and make a play on the ball, but came up with the foul against Davis. Davis four of four at the line, 73% during the season. The Celtics have hit all 20 of their free throws. They lead 91-88, four and six ten seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And Orlando does not have any timeouts. Still plenty of time to get the ball up. 4.6 seconds left if Davis was to miss. Hits both. 
four-point lead. Celtics do not want a foul. Time running out. Here's Johnson forcing and the Boston Celtics coming from behind to steal one.